Hey guys, it's Chris Jones for episode 44 of Ask Me Anything. In my previous episode, we talked about on-site content marketing. This idea of you building up authorship and positioning your website as a resource by publishing content on a regular basis over time on your website. It's critical. It's one of the top three ranking factors and um, is really essential to any of you that care about ranking for more keywords and ranking higher um, on Google. At the beginning of the previous AMA, I said that there's a distinction between on-site content marketing where you're publishing uh, content on your website versus off-site content marketing, and that I would do a video really just targeted on off-site content marketing. Um, as I mentioned in the previous video, uh, there are several chapters in my book, Search Engine Optimization, Your Visual Blueprint for Effective Internet Marketing, that cover these topics. Uh, chapter six um, on writing content is useful. Uh, for purposes of today's AMA, uh, chapter eight on building links uh, will be helpful, and uh, there's a number of other topics in here. Again, you guys could feel free, you know, to uh, if you don't want to splurge for the book, which is available at any major bookstore. I'm not trying to sell books here. You could just go ahead and reach out to me or post below, and I'll actually go ahead and send you the chapters for free. Um, so, uh, offsite content marketing. Why should you care? Um, Let's first say what offsite content marketing is. It's when you become an author and publish content on third party websites, including industry publications, blogs, news websites, among many others. Here are some of the benefits. Number one, and this is the most important ranking factor, and if for no other reason why you should continue to listen to this video, <clears throat> the number one ranking factor for SEO continues to be an automated analysis of the quantity and quality of the links pointing from third-party websites back to your website. Generally speaking, the more links you have, and importantly, the higher quality of those links, uh, the more likely it is that that content that we talked about in the, in the previous AMA is going to rank real high on Google, resulting in more traffic, more leads, more sales, more phone calls, more transactions, whatever it is that you care about. Um, you'll get more of it if you do this properly, which is why I'm dedicating my time to helping you guys understand this. So number one benefit is building links. This is a little bit more techie, but it, it's another way of looking at it is building your authority, building your domain authority or your authoritativeness um, as an expert. The two ways that, that you're going to build links um, or that you have available when you publish third-party content is either through your byline, which is the little author bio section that tends to be at the bottom of your content, or within the body of the content. You can link to your, to your website or to other uh, websites you may own or partners or uh, really resources that you're citing, uh, citing within in the content. Second reason is thought leadership. We've talked in previous AMAs about the importance of personal brand and business brand. I'm a big believer that, that building great brands is an active process. It just shouldn't happen by accent, uh, accident. You should always be conscious and conscientious of ways to build your brand. And I'm telling you right now, having published nearly 300 articles uh, and being cited in, in a number of, of industry publications from the Wall Street Journal and Inc. Magazine and Forbes and Fast Company uh, to Search Engine Journal, it's a huge difference maker for your personal and professional brand. So thought leadership is a real deal. And when we're talking about search engine optimization, Really, thought leadership is, is what, uh, not only thought leadership, but company leadership is what Google is ultimately analyzing here. Third, brand building. It's a great way of just getting your brand out in a conversation that's taking place across either your industry or across news websites or across the blogosphere. Fourth, you get traffic referrals. 
So if I could promise you that when I'm published on Forbes or Fast Company or, or any of the others, I get spikes. Uh, Inc. is a perfect example. Every time I publish an article on Inc., Inc. has mul several million uh, followers on Twitter. They always tweet my stuff, and I end up with hundreds of new Twitter followers. Some of you wonder, how does this guy have 150 or 160,000 Twitter followers? Part of it is because I have a kick-ass off-site content marketing strategy. But every time they do that, um, you know, I gain followers. You'll gain web traffic. You'll, you'll, you'll gain eyeballs on your brand, personal brand, professional brand. So there's, those are four benefits. That's why you should really care. Um, what should you write about? Well, if you saw the previous AMA, I gave you some tips. Uh, but my recommendation uh, is twofold. Number one, things you know a lot about. Things that other, consider, uh, other people consider you an expert on, right? And then number two, your passion. So if you take my career as an example and all of the hundreds of publications I've had, I write really on two topics, maybe three. Let's say three. The two areas where I'm an expert, a fairly clear expert, either a decade or two decades of experience, are the broad category of digital marketing, SEO, pay-per-click, content marketing, social media optimization, uh, basically traffic monetization. The other area is um, in the financial industry, raising investment capital, mergers and acquisitions, so how to set your company up for fundraise or how to set your company up for acquisition. Those are the two areas that I'm an expert in. I enjoy those areas, and don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm, <clears throat> I'm passionate about it, but I am nowhere near as passionate on those two topics, no offense to the topics, as I am about personal and professional development, guys. You know that. Why in the world would I do 100 of these videos? It's not driven by the, the, the former two. I don't care if you guys buy my books, it'd be great, or I don't care if you buy my services. What I really want is I want to inspire you to become the best possible version of yourself, build the best possible company you could build. Success leaves clues. And I'm here and I'm dedicated and passionate to share that with you via video, via third-party articles, on-site stuff, public speaking, right? So you get it. So you just got to figure out what you know a lot about. And trust me, you know a hell of a lot more about topics than other people. And there are no exceptions here. Sometimes people will say to me, well, I'm not really an expert on anything. Bullshit. The reality is, is that you probably know more about gardening or cooking um, or, or uh, something else than most people. Believe it or not, there is a huge audience online of people who want to consume your expertise. Hope that's helpful. So, um, okay, let's move on to the next one. So, how do you get people to really publish your content? Um, and the easy answer is that, number one, there are thousands or tens of thousands of, of websites out there. Again, industry-related um, publications, blogs, news sites that are looking for authors that know, that have knowledge on particular topics. So the answer is there's a ton of resources out there available to you. You just got, you have to find them. You've got to, you got to spend the time to identify uh, the resources. Um, and then number two, if you haven't published yet, right? So I get this question a lot. If you haven't published before, what I'd recommend you doing is finding that topic that you're either an expert in or really passionate about and writing a great article. Before you even know the source, right? Um, write that article and shop it top down to the top dream publication uh, all the way down. Your patience early, early on is going to be critical. Now, at this stage of my career, I could tell you in the early days, it was very difficult um, or it was challenging. It wasn't terribly difficult. It just required time to find those right sources to publish my content. Now, I could publish content just about anywhere because of my portfolio, I guess, if you will, of high-quality content that I've put out across many years. So, um, so there you go. So, so you write that piece of content. Um, some best practices. So I've tried to kind of structure this video to be actionable. Like, it's going to be very difficult if you watch this from front to end 
and take notes and not have an actionable next steps to start writing off-site content. I, um, so best practices is where I'm going to end this, right? So yesterday, uh, or when, in the previous AMA, we chatted about um, on-site content. A lot of the same rules apply. Um, I could tell you that the uh, publisher of your content will be really appreciative of your interest in optimizing the content for particular themes or topics or categories and for keywords. So a lot of those rules apply. It's very rare that they'll actually ask you to give them meta information. Um, some may, but I don't think you have to worry about that. Um, I would say as an overall recommendation, I would say the quality of your content and the thoughtfulness of it is what's going to be most important. But if you can also optimize it, I think that the third party websites will be particularly appreciative of that. And like we chatted about um, in uh, AMA, in the previous AMA, you want to start with keyword research, right? So you don't, uh, once you identify your passion or your area of expertise, you really want to do some, some research um, to put together kind of the universe of, of, of things that you would be, you'd want to target. You'd use things like the Google Keyword Planner. You could do some competitive research with tools like SEMrush and SpyFu. Uh, and ultimately, you want to have a targeted keyword list that you could pull from that will give you more than enough ideas, actionable ideas, uh, to write your content. I mentioned to you uh, that you should write for humans um, and not search engines, uh, but you should optimize for the search engines, and that that's part art and part science. You know, when you're writing for a third party, you should be more artistic uh, than uh, scientific. Uh, because, uh, you know, I really want the quality of your content to, to speak uh, to the publisher. Avoid over-optimization. Your off-site content marketing strategy should not ever, ever seem like you're keyword stuffing uh, or, you know, over-optimizing it for your own gains. Honestly, the, the content needs, on, uh, when you're doing off-site content, to speak for itself. It needs to be, um, in terms of the length, you know, uh, different publications have different rules, but my general thinking here is the same as on-site, which is mix it up. Um, I know, actually, the interesting thing about Inc. Magazine, where I get published a lot, is I will often submit to them an 800 to 1,000 word piece. They'll say, we love this and want to publish it, but can you bring it back down to six to 700 words? It's just their editorial guidelines. And that's happened to me a number of times. So sometimes the length is dictated by where you're publishing the content. Um, but if once you establish a relationship and if there's flexibility, I would recommend that you mix it up. There's a ton of different um, types of content from informational, um, listicle, um, you know, doing more white paper based stuff, like the real thought leadership stuff. But it should always be useful, engaging, entertaining, and it, uh, when applicable, should, should solve a problem. Those are the types of, by the way, those are the types of content that's going to drive you a lot of referral traffic because those, those uh, content that's informational and engaging and entertaining and, and problem solving is the type of stuff that people share publicly and privately. Like if they read one of your pieces that helps solve a problem and they know a friend that is having that problem, they're very likely to send it write to that person and say, hey, listen, look at this article or this you know, video, by the way, which is a, a content type. Um, you could either do a video in and of itself, or you could do a video plus content. Um, but that could get sent to someone and it could solve their problem. Like I said, you don't really have to worry as much about the meta information and the, and the keyword density, though. I think you should be mindful of it. Uh, and then finally, you need to put together a content calendar. I mean, this is my secret sauce, as I said in the last AMA. This is it, guys. One of the hardest things for business owners and entrepreneurs and authors, for that matter, is, is publishing content on a regular basis over time. You need to have a content calendar in, in, in order to pull that off. And I should also say that you should have an editorial team. That editorial team could be your significant other. 
It could be an intern. It could be a member of your staff. But you really should have a couple of sets of eyeballs through a process that before you, before you send that content off to the third party, it really should have some polish. Most of those third parties have editorial teams. For instance, Inc. or Forbes or one of these others that I write for. Um, my goodness, what I originally write and what it becomes, it's still mine, but goes through three, four, five rounds of editorial. That's not always going to be the case, but you should have some eyeballs on it before you, uh, before you send it. So um, here's a, uh, I, I told you I was going to give you an actionable uh, guide here. So if you really want to get your feet wet and you're willing to write on a topic that broadly relates to digital marketing. It could be your perspective on it, your lack of understanding of it. It could be that you've got some skills or a case study or anything else that you'd like to share in the form of a piece of content. I'd like to um, offer you the opportunity to publish that on LSEO.com, which is my digital marketing company, which has got a really high authority, so it'll pass that back to you from a uh, link building uh, point of view. So, uh, so do that. You could either comment below and say, Chris, I'm going to write a piece for you, uh, or you could private message me. Either way, um, I am here to help you take the next steps. So now get to work, and I'll see you in episode 45. Peace.